Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Jess and today I'm going to change my plans a little bit. What and I think I might have mentioned it in my last video that I posted, but I wanted to show you and kind of harvest all of my little babies that are now growing on all my succulent propagations. However, when I went to harvest them and start this video, um, I noticed that a lot of my succulents were really thirsty. So I need to water them before I can harvest them, or at least that's going to give me a much better success rate. And so that's what we're going to do in today's video. I figured maybe you guys would like to see how I water my plants, also maybe how I fertilize them, maintenance, all of those little checks and balances. Every th plant of mine is desperately needing a drink of water. So I thought I would kind of go over that because I know I get a lot of questions about watering and fertilizing and all of those aspects of growing succulents. So I figured you guys still might benefit from watching that. I have a little cup of tea because I'm freezing. It finally dropped below 32 degrees here. So it started snowing a little bit more in the hills. And so it's pretty chilly here, but this is from my October sips by box. So go check out that down in the description box if you want a tea subscription and I guess let's just get watering. Okay, so let's talk about fertilization just really quick. I'll go over also what I do for my house plants if you're curious on that piece as well. So I have two fertilizers here and I am not specifically telling you to get these kinds, more of kind of what aspects to look for in them. So with my cactus and plant food, or for my succulents, I haven't noticed a major difference and I've only been fertilizing maybe two or three months. Um, but you feed them every time you water and it's a liquid cactus plant food is the one that I use and it's a 277 ratio. And so I guess that's kind of what I would look for. Otherwise, I think I'll, I'll look to see if I can't find like an Amazon link for this down below. I bought this at our local nursery. And then the other thing that I use that I actually have noticed quite a bit of a difference with is for my house plants. And I use Jack's um, house plant special and it's a 15, 30, 15 mix. And, um, I use it on all of my house plants. Now I do not use this on any edible plants. So like my basils and herbs and um, those plants that I have in my house, I don't use any fertilizer on. And I just try to kind of add a little bit of compost when I have that batch going. So same with this one. It Well, it is a solid, it's a powder, and you use a very little amount <laughs> for watering, but you add it to the water that you then um, water your plants with. So I just have a little plastic jug and I've kind of dedicated this one to be my fertilizing and watering can for my house plants just because I don't want to honestly clean it out every week I use it and um, I don't want to have to you know worry about the fertilizer sticking around and harming me in any way or my family. So in terms of how often to water and you can kind of keep track of this in like a little garden journal or if you have a little whiteboard somewhere you can just write whenever you do water so that you can look back on that and kind of see when the last time was. For all of my leafy house plants, so like my fiddle leaf fig back here, my monstera adansonii, uh, what else do I have over here? Elephant ears, those types of plants I water with this Jack's fertilizer once a week typically. It's been about a week and a half since I have watered them, so that's why everything's looking a little thirsty. So um, I water them about weekly and not all of my containers have drainage holes, so I just am very cautious with how much water I give them. Um, I tend to err more on watering less than watering more because I don't have drainage holes and also because I can always be watching the plant and water more as needed. So I would prefer to give it just a little bit and then water again either that next week or um, in a few days. So. Typically the soil doesn't dry out that fast though, and that's really what I'm gauging it off of. And so if my soil is still drenched from last week, which I'm sure I have a few that I've overwatered a little bit, um, that I'll just skip this week so that I don't rot them. Um, but for my succulents and cactus, 
it's probably been about a month since I've watered them last, if not two months. I am not very good about watering them and they also are the ones that dry out the fastest just because they have direct bright light from my grow lights. But um, that's what they're kind of also built for and so they don't really mind. But now they're kind of getting a little bit wrinkly and thirsty and since I want to propagate them, I need to water them and I would recommend always watering about a week before you propagate any succulent or plant really just so that it has the best success that it can. Okay, so I have my pitcher full of water. I have my plant and cactus food, which I'm just gonna shake up. The spout doesn't work for me anymore. Um, I think it's all clogged up, but you're really not supposed to add too much um, into this. But essentially I just kind of pour a bit in. And perhaps I'm not using the correct ratio, so that's probably why it's not working as well. But I figure, you know, this kind of gives them just a little bit of a boost that they need. Um, and then I typically don't water each plant directly. Um, my, I'll show you here in just a second, but my plants, all my succulents sit in a tray and all of the pots are kind of like those nursery pots where there's a bunch of drainage holes on the bottom. So all of my plants will kind of sit in water and then soak up the water from the bottoms from the base of the pot and so I'll kind of show you that here in a bit some of the bigger pots I do try to water a little bit of the surface just so I can ensure that they do get enough water um, near their roots that they need and then they'll just drain out the rest and then I use about two jugs of this um, for the top shelf that's completely filled with succulents and then if I if it looks like it I need more then I'll use some more but it usually leaves about half an inch to an inch of water kind of sitting or having my pot sit in it and then I will come back in the morning typically and if there's still water sitting in my tray then I will syringe it out and um, dump it otherwise usually most of the time two of these if I use more then sometimes I'll have water left but two of these typically all of the plants will soak up and I will I will have a dry tray come morning so um, that's typically my routine for that and then I'll make up another batch and individually water the succulents that are more in the decorative pots and um, kind of scattered throughout the house in places like that. Okay so this is the top shelf that I was referring to and I will go and kind of pour my pitcher of water in all of these little pots and kind of most of the time I'll just make a little space where I can just kind of dump the excess in um, and then but I'll shut off these lights so that you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so I'm actually going to remove a few of these pots. Look how pretty that is. Um, and set them aside for the time being. Um, just so that I can water without getting a bunch actually in the plants themselves. Um, but like I said, I'll take these ones. And maybe I'll move you over here. I'll take this picture and kind of... Pour a little bit of water in the plants that I know get a little bit extra thirsty. So like in this terracotta, I know that it doesn't absorb as easily. So I'll give that one a little bit. And then in these larger pots as well, I'll slowly just kind of pour some in. Now the fertilizer does leave a little bit of a residue on the leaves, which you can see sometimes. Um, it doesn't really bother me and it doesn't seem to bother the plants. But if you're worried about it, then you can for sure just focus on adding the water from the bottom instead of from the top, like I'm doing here. I do want to mention is that I water this way because my succulents get eight hours of bright direct light from my grow lights every single day if you do not have such a bright light on your succulents then they may not prefer to be watered so um, heavily uh, if you are especially if you're a beginner or not as comfortable with 
watering succulents, I would water so sparingly and then just keep an eye on them. Less is always more when it comes to watering succulents. And you, like I said, you can always water more, but it's very difficult to recover from root rot. And so definitely always try to avoid that. So here is it all watered. If I take this out, you can see that there is a little layer of water that everybody is sitting in and will absorb. And then the other thing that I do, kind of the last step, is you can see a lot of water caked on all of the leaves in the little crevices, different spaces like that, especially right here. There's a really big one. I go and I either wiggle or blow off all of the water that is sitting in my rosettes because this can lead to rot. So that's a very important step that I think is missed a lot and it can be really devastating to take such good care of all of your plants only for a little bit of a water droplet to ruin them. So a few signs that your plants are thirsty is when you can start to see some wrinkles and when your leaves bend very easily. So this one isn't necessarily thirsty at all um, I, the leaf will wiggle, but it won't bend, whereas these ones will bend. And then this one is also a really good example of the leaf bending. So just kind of watch for those signs and, um, you should be good. All right, so now that we have all of the succulents watered, I went ahead and just quickly watered the second bottom with one last third jug. I wanted to talk about my house plants and the watering schedule for that. But also look how good that looks. Um, this aluminum plant is very, very thirsty. Um, it has gone a little bit too long without a watering, as you can very much tell. And then we have my Monstera adansonii back here. This one always has wet soil, um, so I barely ever water this one just because the soil is always quite damp whenever I test it out. So I won't be watering this one today. Um, because it's already so moist in there. Now, with the plants that are tropical and have just a nursery pot, so I'm going to be doing that to this one, this one back here, this beautiful one, and also my Majesty Palm. Um, as long as they have drainage holes in their pots, and I honestly even do this to this fiddly fig, I bring it into my shower and I give it a shower as if it was in the rainforest and they love it. So I'm going to start moving all of these into the bathtub. Here is a beautiful birds of paradise that actually lives here in my bathroom. Um, it loves the moisture. This thing started out about this big. It does get this fertilizer weekly. Um, it does not get the showers typically weekly, but I think it really could benefit since I'm going to be moving all of my other plants in here as well. So we're just going to put him in the back there. Okay, so we're going to call this good for now. These are all of the ones that have really great drainage holes. Um, I have a bunch of other house plants that are more in pretty pottery that I don't feel like would benefit from being watered in this fashion. They just don't dry up as quickly. Um, one thing I am going to do though is I'll make up a batch with the fertilizer and that will be kind of the last um, watering that I give it. But I'll let it kind of sit in here for about 10 minutes running with the shower on. So I'll kind of show you that as well and um, kind of go from there. Okay, so I do like to move my shower curtain in just so that I don't get water everywhere. 
Okay, so there we go. And then we'll turn the water on to cold into the shower mode. I'll just kind of reposition them in here like so. You can kind of target it to be at the root ball of some. Um, we'll kind of do that for the Majesty Palm for a few minutes like that and then close it back up. All right, so now we are going to, while that shower is running, I'm going to add a little bit of fertilizer to my jug here and it's very little. It's up to that first line. And we're going to go fill this up with water and then water the rest of the house plants. Okay, so ignore the mess, but I'm watering these two plants here. They're canna lilies and elephant ear pot planters. Um, these two probably get more water than a lot of the other house plants that I have do just because they're in such large containers. Um, let's see if I got them all. There's a lot of little guys in here. So these ones honestly would probably benefit from being in the shower too, but. Uh, so a lot of planters of mine do not have drainage holes like this planter that the aluminum plant is in. So when I water it, I'm not going to water very much. And this one can handle honestly a little bit more, but I'm just going to water a little bit. And like I said, I can always come back and water more later this week if I really need to. Um, one thing I always really like to do is check on all of the water levels for all of the planters. This one is still actually fairly wet, so I'm going to leave that one be. Um, this one is very much dry, so we're going to water these little snake plant and bird nest propagations. Um, that cactus will probably be fine for now. This one I need to go throw in the shower because I forgot him. So like I said, this monster Adansonia I'm also going to skip because it has very wet soil as it is. This fiddle leaf fig is still pretty moist so that's why I didn't bring it into the shower um, or anything like that. Otherwise it could have benefited from it. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that with all propagations that are in water, now is a great time to change out that water while you're doing the maintenance on everything else. Okay, so now I have officially watered all of my plants. It was a little hard to do one-handed, but all of those are watered. Don't forget your ones up high <laughs> or the ones down low, um, either that are out of sight a little bit. Um, just make sure that you catch everything. Several times while I was watering the plants, I came back in here and moved where the water was kind of angled so that all of them would get watered appropriately and then um, watered a little bit extra and just kind of topped them off with a little of that fertilized water as well. So then, as you can kind of tell, all of the leaves are really wet. And if I shake them, a bunch of water falls. So I'm actually going to just leave all of these plants in here for the next few hours, probably till tomorrow morning. Honestly, I probably won't even get to it till tomorrow evening, but this is not the main shower that we use, so it's fine. But I like to let all of the excess water still continue to drain and kind of dry out before I go and put them back on my shelves. All right, so that is all that I have for you guys today. Um, I hope that this was kind of helpful for you. A few of the things that I do wanna mention though and emphasize is that do not water as much as I if you do not have as much light. Um, 
Also use really well draining soil for all of your succulents and cactus. They do not like water. I will include a link down below for the pumice that I use. And if you're a beginner, pumice is great because it really kind of controls the water situation for your succulent. Always have drainage holes if you are a beginner. I have a lot of plants in, uh, that are not in drainage holes, but that's because I also know how to water them appropriately. I think I've said it about 12 times already in this video, but do not water too much. Focus on watering just a little bit, just enough, and then if you need more water, you can always add that later on that week or even the next week. Your plant will be so much happier if you just do not overwater. Please. So, um, I know that that's kind of a lot. It takes me probably about 30 minutes to 45 minutes to water all of my plants. I do not water my succulents every single week, so it probably only takes me about 20 minutes to water my house plants every week, and they love it. They love to be watered and fertilized, and I, for the longest time, I didn't fertilize, and after I started fertilizing with just even that little stuff that you add in the water, which I think I paid $5 for, and I've had it for about a year using it weekly, and I am nowhere near being out. So it's a very cheap, um, and it makes your plants beautiful, and they are loving life right now because of all of the fertilizer that they get. So um, keep that in mind. I will include links to everything down below, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any questions and comments down below. Um, I will try to answer them for you if something was unclear in this video. So go ahead and click the like button if you liked this and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss hopefully next week's video when I actually get to propagate all of the succulents and harvest all of those babies because they will all be happy and healthy <laughs> now that they're all watered. And I will see you guys in the next one.